we're talking about mental health and uh, raising money for the same charity as well. Um, I can now bring onto the line with a bit of luck, uh, Joe Bonson from the band Hollow Star. Joe, are you there? How are you doing? I'm here. How you doing? Yeah. I'm good. Nice to see you, mate. Oh, nice to hear from you. How everything, everything all well with you? Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, I can't be with you in the studio today. It was a, a late night drive home from uh, from Birmingham after a show last night. So, uh, uh, no, thanks for having me on the phone. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Um, now, uh, you've obviously played a fair few gigs that I've been involved with uh, over the over the years uh, for various different charities. Um, one of the things, God, we need some WD forty on that on that arm, don't we? Um, either way, sorry about that, Joe. Um, uh, so you've played uh, many gigs. Uh, we've been involved in different charities and things like that. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things uh, that you talk about is your as uh, your mental health experiences. And uh, one of the tracks uh, we're going to play in a little bit is uh, is kind of related to that as well. Maybe you could just talk us through some of your experiences as a musician uh, growing up with some of them issues. Yeah, I mean, mine. I'll be honest with you. Mine sort of, um, though I was dealing with it sort of in my in my sort of mid to late teens. It sort of um, it came to its head really, sort of in the early in my early twenties. Um, sort of as you go in through into that the adult period through that period of my life as well. I wasn't actually involved in music in any way. Um, and what I slowly found was I was just getting almost lost in my own sense of direction of what my life was supposed to be doing. Um, and I noticed that the patterns that with sort of my happiness of going up and down and up and down. Um, the one, one thing I used to try and to try and combat that was to actually go and jam out. And it was actually um, it was me, Jack, and Phil used to go and, and jam out in uh, in a few practice rooms. Sort of as I got towards sort of 24 years old, just trying to um, it distracted you. Um, for me, it allowed me to put all of the things going on in my head into lyrics. Um, and then sort of as soon as I sang it, it made me feel a lot better. And from that point, it was um, it, sort of music became my own sort of form of therapy, really. I say because uh, you, you're obviously uh, you're not the only one. Um, I, I know even myself being in bands and writing music, it is it is kind of it's almost like a very therapeutic kind of feeling to put those words and uh, lyrics down onto paper and it's kind of almost like an outlet and now we've seen obviously through um through the unfortunate events of some other musicians that have, have fell victim to to mental health issues and the effects that that's had not only on them but also on the families around them as well um how how do you feel um that it's it's kind of uh, it's, it's kind of doing this kind of almost like a little bit of a release for you in a way of getting those feelings out yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, the thing I always say about you things like they call them the hidden illnesses, don't they? Um, things like anxiety, depression, um, and and the big thing with these illnesses is is the main thing that can really help you with these is actually talking to people about it. Um, the worst thing, again, about this is the nature of these illnesses take away your ability and confidence to go talk to people about Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. So when you're on stage with a microphone and you can do it sort of through the through a medium of singing a song and sort of i suppose not through such a direct conversation it's kind of it's my way of being able to talk about it but without having to go through the anxiety of having to have the conversation as such well that's one of the other um, things that's so well explained yeah yeah because one of one of the things people say to me quite a lot and in, in the times that i was playing music out live and about um, they kind of say to me, oh, Matt, you're like when when you're out and about, just kind of not doing musical things. Um, you're quite a, a reserved kind of person, quite quiet. But you almost kind of turn into a different person when you get onto that stage. Uh, how how like, I'm, I'm sure you've had it uh, so many times. How do you manage to get up on that stage and do it? Uh, and it just it kind of just comes naturally as that outlet. But I I, I think um, it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's it's a difficult one to kind of um I don't, I don't know what's the best way of explaining it. it's a difficult one to kind of explain how you can you can be this quite reserved person and then you can jump up on stage in front of hundreds of people and just go out and and just let it all go i mean myself i don't know if, if you're <coughs> the same but i find if you put me in a room i know when i'm playing in a room full of 800 to a thousand people that's, that's not a problem. Easier than if you put me in yeah. a room of three people. Absolutely. If you put me in a room in front of three people. I'm 
conscious of everybody's facial reactions to every note I'm playing. Absolutely. Big do, do, rooms do you, do you are find so much left to I was going to say, do you find it, uh, say, performing to a thousand people is not a problem? However, performing a brand new song in front of your mum and dad is the hardest thing in the world. 100%. 100%. (laughs) Um, What we're going to do is we're going to play one of your tracks uh, called uh, Feel the Burn. It's got some kind of relevances to to kind of uh, and to the situation that, and that we're speaking about today maybe you want to tell us and you can explain a little bit more about the track and and uh, and what it's all about yeah well this was um this was written literally about it was written the morning after i'd had a massive depression crash where um the thing is not everybody's mental health is the same it reacts in the same way should we say so even though two people may have depression, the exact same form of a mental health sort of um, illness, their depressions may be different. They may have different triggers. Um, With mine in particular, what I tend to do, or what I find find is I go quite numb. Um, So I'm not sure with what matters anymore. Do I even care about anything? Can I be bothered to go? And even the things closest to me, it almost feels like I don't care anymore. So weirdly i find myself subconsciously taking the closest things to me and really messing them up almost as a subconscious test of whether i still care or feel anymore and that was kind of what i wanted to put across in the song with using the putting my hand in the fire to see if you still feel the burn it is it's trying to talk about that moment when you're doing things that aren't self-healthy is just it- to kind of where you're at is there a moment in the in the song where it kind of it, it kind of builds up and um and kind of has like that ending that enlightened ending or is, or is it kind of does it follow on from that and and kind of you are you, <laughs> wait, are you waiting to the right the the second part to this this song uh i mean to be, i'll be honest with with you matt one thing that i do feel um Mental health, the longer I'm living with it, I do think, I don't know necessarily whether you ever completely beat it, but what you do learn is how to live with it and how to work with it, um, to not let it control your life. Um, so I don't know whether it'll ever, I'll ever necessarily, it'll ever go away, but I do know that there is um, a point when it stops controlling you. I've found a point when it stopped controlling me now, which is, which is nice. Um, so uh, I think this song is particularly held for that moment in time because the last line of the song is all this time I never listened which um, again with people that are dealing with it you, they, a lot of people do tend to shut down to help so I think this is this song is very much aimed at being that moment of the um, of the battle that's brilliant thank you so much for your thoughts there uh, Joe thanks for coming on air with us and uh, take care mate and uh, we'll hopefully see you soon no, Matt, I really appreciate it. What you do, what you guys are doing in raising awareness is um, helping so many people. So thank you for uh, having me a part of it. Not a problem at all. See you later, mate. Thank you. Take care.
is hollow star with the track feel the burn a big thank you to joe bonson for for joining us on the phone and talking about some of his experiences there um i think from there we, we do obviously want to we want to give out some information as to if if you if, if anything within that interview kind of uh, touched the nerve or it kind of affects you in any way and you and you want to find support uh, there are many ways that you can do that callum um you are going to tell us at those moments uh, and those places where we can get involved and you can you can seek help from those places so obviously the whole point of today is to discuss mental health and, and also raise money for a great cause but if you yourself are struggling um we, we obviously not any qualified in uh helping with these problems but you do have many options one of those is going to a website such as findsupportcam.com if you are in cambridge or uh, i'm sure if you're anywhere else as well um and there's a lot of information there of how you can seek help um, and definitely do so if, if you do are currently suffering from such problems and if you would like to help donate to, uh, to our cause today please go to camfm.co.uk forward slash donate